But what's hilarious about this is, I don't know if you can actually read this, probably the right, wrong lens. Two megapixel camera. I have actually had this box for six days. In this box is the Galaxy S8. My camera is dangling extremely. First thing, let's open up this box. Wait, 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 better. Yeah, that's, that's a knife. Okay, look at this beautiful box. Uh, comes in a nice case. Oh boy, here we go. Oh! Wow, that, that is a nice looking phone. I had already done this review already, but I was having, I was so rushed uh, when I did it. First, let me give a huge shout out to all these guys that do these tech review videos, because man, it is so hard. So here we go. Here is the Galaxy S7, and here is the S8. They're essentially the same phone. Not much difference. The only difference is the S8 is just a tiny bit more narrow than the S7. You can barely, that's basically it, man. This review is just going so. The phone absolutely beautiful the screen just kind of oozes off the side initial impressions it's fucking beautiful you're beautiful The one thing I do like is that no matter what color you choose, the fronts are all black. So it makes the decision a little bit easier. You can choose the color. I got Arctic Silver. Nonetheless, you're never going to see it. I did get this one case that has a clear back. It's still, you can't see it in all its glory. That's my only problem. The fact that it's less narrow, it makes it really easier to hold in the hand. Again, when I did this, it's still a little wide. This, I can almost get full coverage and I have substantially small hands, which is weird because I wear a size 12 shoe, so. I kind of wish it was a bendable screen. I'm waiting for the bendable phones, man. Like, where's that at? You know, let's talk about battery life. This thing has a 3,000 milliamp battery. Runs pretty good, I would say probably. I haven't really been able to test it out. They just, I mean, you gotta think about technology today. You know CERN, that whole, that, that like particle collider where they can open up black holes and shit? This is the Large Hadron Collider or LHC for short. Very interesting, collisions, collisions, collisions. And they can't make a phone last seven days with all the apps running? I'm just saying, you know, like we're opening up portals to evil worlds and stuff like that and we can't get a phone to last for seven days. <laughs> Let me start off with the negatives first. One, I don't know if it's the settings that I'm doing, but I turn off the phone, I turn it back on. First thing that happens, all these bullshit notifications. I slide to open it, boom. Now it goes straight to internet for some some reason just spamming the shit every five minutes so the first thing you have to do is go through and block every app it's so touch sensitive to everything it just it turns on it's taking pictures it's sending messages to people what I need the phone to do shoot pictures shoot video transfer data that's it that's all I care about with the phone 50% of my TV show is shot with the phone so let's go to sound quality uh, again I don't know if I'm going deaf or something but but even at the highest volume, I can't hear shit. It's very like echoey. Uh, sound quality seemed to be better on the S7. Even the sound quality on the S7 wasn't that great comparatively to the iPhone. The interface still does not compete with the iPhone 7. And that's essentially the only difference in the two phones. Uh, everything else on the Galaxy S8, again, I think is just far superior than the iPhone. As far as look, camera, screen, uh, everything is great, it's just they 
they haven't quite got the interface. This phone has a 8 megapixel front facing camera that actually uh, auto focuses. So I haven't seen that on a phone yet. Tested out a little bit of the camera in low light. Do you know what that is, but you're gonna try to make something. Yeah. 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 As far as photo goes, I'm gonna take a few right now in the studio before I get done with this review. Yeah, I don't take that many photos. Almost all my stuff is video content. It's the video quality that was really important to me, so I'll try to do a little time lapse with this phone and just let you sh see how good it is. through a few specs. It comes in two sizes, a 5.8 and a 6.2 for the S8 Plus. Uh, kind of too big for me, I think. Here is my iPhone 4S. I think phones should be this size. If this is all full screen, a little bit thinner, I would actually prefer this phone than this phone. Phones should be getting smaller, not bigger. I'm not sitting there trying to watch movies and shit all day long. This does have a 570 pixel count AMOLED display. I don't know what that means, but all I can say is it looks sick. 29 by 60 by 1440 resolution. It has a weird 18.5 by 9 ratio. When you're watching YouTube videos and stuff like that, you are going to get the black bars on it. But when you are scrolling on YouTube or a web page, there's just a lot more room on the screen to be able to see stuff. They have something called an infinity display. They basically just stuck to that design and made everything infinity display, which again, it's beautiful. It's sleek. It's like a James Bond phone. The top of the phone has a uh, secondary infrared camera for the uh, retina scanner and the facial recognition. It also has a proximity sensor and an ambient light sensor and a fingerprint sensor. So here's the fingerprint sen sensor right here. Infrared. Honestly, uh, I don't really like using any of those things. It's like when you really think about it, fingerprint, retina, facial scanner, you're basically just asking to get your identity taken. I mean, they have everything you could possibly need now to be able to steal your identity. You could just take a picture of someone's face and put it in front of the phone and it will unlock it. However, that new security feature was compromised earlier today on the live stream through Periscope by the guys at Marciano Phone. The guy registered his face and then took a picture of himself and unlocked the phone. That's why I kind of stayed away from Snapchat, any of those things where they can scan your face. Honestly, I think it should just be a voice recognition. That would be the hardest thing to try to duplicate. Remember the movie The Fly when he would walk in and the whole computer was based on a voice activation? Brundle. Uh, Brundle, Seth? Brundle, Seth. That. Just keep it simple. Off to the camera, that's the most important part. 12 mega megapixel rear camera, 8 megapixel front camera. To be honest, what seems to make more sense if the camera was actually a swivel so that it could swivel from the front to the back. That way they're both 12 megapixel. Also, they filed down the bevel. So now you don't have that problem when you set your phone down that it's sitting on the edge of the phone. The fingerprint sensor is nice. You're just, like in the videos, you're just gonna end up getting smudges all over your camera. Uh, as far as memory, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal memory, plus the ability to add a, probably, I guess, like 128 gig storage, depending on the memory card that you put in. That's the thing that sucks about iPhone, is you have to pay more to have more memory in the phone. There's a uh, assistant on here that's essentially like Siri, but it's uh, called Bixby. It's still kind of in development. And the same thing, you also have Google Assistant already programmed into this thing. All they're doing is just pulling information from you, what you like, where you go, what you do. When I use Siri, it just wasn't quite I need I need like a her program. You know the movie Her? I need I want I want I want the ability to choose Scarlett Johansson as my phone voice. Hello, I'm here. Hi. Hi. 
Hi. It's 2017. Another aspect on the phone you'll notice is that there are no more bezels on the top or the bottom. The home button, which they had on the S7 right here, this, there is no actual physical button. The home button is actually an interface on the screen. And that's how you turn the phone on and off and it does make a nice little vibration. It's really hard to get used to first. It's just you sitting there jamming on the screen. This phone also does have Bluetooth 5.0. Two people, Bluetooth headphones, can listen to music or watch a movie on your phone, which is pretty cool. But again, I don't know anything about tech, so I really don't know. It could be Bluetooth 1.0 for all I know. Okay, also this uh, phone is water resistant. I-60 certified. You can have it uh, essentially underwater for one and a half meters for up to 30 minutes. I just don't think phones are meant to be shooting underwater. If you ever wanted to get an underwater shot, I guess it's good that you can do it. Uh, you do get a few different connectors. First off, that I love is that they went all black. They murdered out all the accessories. I was getting getting tired of all the white shit. First thing you notice, AKG headphones. These things apparently are $100, $100 headphones. Uh, I don't really use the headphones that much, but they are really good when you're trying to take important phone calls. I don't understand why they would be $100, but you do get them for free. You get the USB to USB-C adapter, which is great. And then you also get a micro USB to USB-C adapter uh, inside the case as well too. This is the iPhone 6 Plus. You can see this thing, it's, it's a monster. Again, it's balancing out what do you do the most on it. I honestly feel like iPhones should go back to the 4S size. Look at the difference in this. Dude, this is the size, they're getting a little bit smaller, but this is perfect, man. I would love to go back. I'm not gonna knock the iPhone. It's a great phone. The only reason I switched to Galaxy was the fact of my past video. Make sure you check it out, how I shot a runway show on a Galaxy. My DP had a Galaxy. We fucked up, the camera battery ran out, and he was actually able to shoot the whole runway show with the Galaxy S4. And the client never knew. That was the day I decided I'm switching from iPhone to Galaxy. I'm not super wowed by it. It's not like the S6 when it came out. Folks, I'm sorry if you clicked on this thinking you were going to get an amazing tech review. This is more for the daily vlogger, the photographer, the filmmaker. Everything about this phone is great. Thanks again for watching, guys. I will see you on the next episode.